These incredible pictures were taken by Malcolm Wilson. Malcolm is a documentarian, but not like most. For years and years and years, I've done documentary photography and I've heard people's stories, um, but the stories sort of got lost in my mind. And certain things came together and in March I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease and I realized at that time that there was less road in front of me than behind me. And I said, well, if I'm ever going to really seriously do this, I need to do it now. Malcolm is talking about a very modern project, using the internet as a vehicle for telling the world about our area. There was a project started a few years ago by a photographer in New York City called Humans of New York. And basically it's a face, Facebook social documentary kind of project where he goes out and he photographs people on the streets of New York and he gets these small quirky quotes from them. Uh, so we took that model and uh, back in June, first week, of, first Tuesday in June of 2015, we launched Humans of Central Appalachia. We started out with zero. Today uh, marks our 18th week and the page already has 20,000 likes. Uh, we're reaching, because of shares and everything, anywhere from 80 to 120, 130,000 people a week. Uh, there are a lot of these human projects going on around the world. There's humans of Paris, humans of Amsterdam, and on and on and on. And based on percentages, the biggest growth of any of the pages is humans of New York, and it's growing 0.8% per week. We're growing anywhere from 4 to 6% per week, so we're the fastest growing project like this in the world. But like so many things in this area, the project is a little different from the norm. These other pages copied what Humans in New York was doing. What we're doing is different. Basically, all the photography is black and white, all the still portraits that we do. And basically, we just go to events like this and find people willing to talk to us and they tell us their story about living and growing up in the mountains. And we publish the whole stories. It's also an oral history project. So we end up with, you know, sometimes 12 pages, you know, in our word processor when the audio is transcribed. Um, and we clean them up. We don't edit them. But, you know, we take out the, if they talked about the grandma here and the grandma 15 minutes later, we'll put them together so it makes more sense. Um, things like that. And we publish these whole stories. And a lot of people say, well, you're crazy because that's not the concept. That's not the concept that the guy in New York did or anybody else around the world did. But Appalachians are natural storytellers. And with that being said, these stories are so popular that we like to believe because of us, Humans in New York is now publishing longer stories. We don't know if they just realize that longer stories are more effective or if they caught on to what we're doing. We like to think they caught on to what we're doing, but we don't know that. Malcolm is not getting rich doing this. But basically the thing is funded out of my discretionary income. We don't make a penny on it. Uh, it's just a project near and dear to my heart to tell the true story of Appalachia, uh, to dispel the stereotypes. Now that's a big deal around here. And it should be. Set people straight, be honest, be truthful, be unfiltered. Um, there are shows like Justified. I don't know if you're familiar with the, the TV show that was popular, it just ended, about my county, Harlan County, Kentucky, which was a drama show, which was so off base, you know, that it just blew my mind. I watched one episode of it and I couldn't watch it anymore. I'm from Harlan County, Kentucky. Southern Justice. I live in Sullivan County, Tennessee, and I'm from Harlan County, Kentucky, and the two Southern Justice shows are Harlan County, Kentucky and Sullivan County, Tennessee, which is a little weird. You know, a lot of people talk about the Beverly Hillbillies. That was, you know, that was part of it. A lot of this started during the war on poverty with, you know, Kennedy and Johnson and, and uh, Johnson's war on poverty. And that brought immediate attention to certain things. Well, the politicians did exactly what the media did. They went and they found the worst, case scenario and said here this is Appalachia well this is not Appalachia there's so many misconceptions about the region it's just it is absolutely uncanny 
But Malcolm's efforts are starting to pay off. People are paying attention to the site and what people of this region have to say. People are responding, not only people in the mountains. Um, we have 45 countries following the page. We have at least 38 languages spoken by people who follow the page. And we have people all over the United States following the page that have no connection to Appalachia or Appalachian culture. Um, and people follow it. We get remarks from them in regard to, oh, you know, I want to move there, I want to live there, da 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 da. And it's honest. It's, it's not some contrived reporter story. If you're on Facebook, check out Humans of Central Appalachia. And if you have a story to tell, Malcolm's contact information is on the Facebook page.